If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in that heavenly land. Look by faith and see, my friend, trust in His promises grand. Good morning, church. Oh, that's pretty good. If you're a guest, you're our honored guest. We're glad that you're worshiping with us here today. I just have a couple of announcements I want to remind everyone about. Um, today at 2 o'clock, if you're helping with VBS, we really encourage everyone to be here at 2 o'clock in the auditorium for a very quick meeting. Uh, we want to go over everything uh, that entails VBS, make sure we're all on the same page. And if you're not yet child safety certified um, to work with our children in the congregation, you can come and do that as well at that time. Um, so that'll be at 2 o'clock. We also will have t-shirts for sale for VBS after service um, until we run out. So uh, you can come by and, and buy a t-shirt for $5 for um, your family. Um, the second thing I want to remind you is that this Wednesday, this Wednesday throughout the summer, we're, we're changing the time of worship to 6.30. So all adult classes, adults and teens, will actually be in here for a singing class um, where we're going to get to sing together and encourage one another and learn new songs. And then our children's class, um, they, will, they will be kicking off their summer camp starting at 6.30 as well back in the children's area. Um, so please uh, make sure to join us for that. Last thing I have is uh, if, if your kids are joining us for camp, for QMCC, that deadline is today. And we leave next week. We leave next week at noon. Um, please be watching your emails for information about that. I'll be sending that out this week. Um, as well. So please make sure you sign up for camp by today if you'd like for them to go. I think Joe has a couple more things. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalms 46. If you want to turn there or be turning there, uh, I have a couple of prayer requests, but we have some great news we want to share before we get into those prayer requests. Uh, but before we do that, there's, uh, I would like to take this time to recognize the World Bible School, uh, all the efforts that have gone into that for so many years, and especially uh, we'd like to recognize Lloyd Stevens for uh, uh, the work for years and years and years, which, Lord, without your help and your guidance and your leadership, that work would have probably never got off the ground, much less accomplished all that it's accomplished. And Lloyd's health is not real good right now, and uh, he needs our prayers. And so we want to pray for Lloyd and for Betty Lou and for all that uh, they are going through. And we want to pray for all the Bible studies that continue uh, to be taking place at this time. Also, Last Sunday, we have several ladies that go out to the Canadian County Jail and uh, have Bible class and Bible study with uh, several of the, the female inmates. But also, we have a group of men, uh, Rick Knight, and Gary Barmart, and Norman Bean, go out to the Canadian County Jail on the men's side. And last Sunday, they had 14 baptisms. 
That is a great, great thing, and we appreciate. Uh, that is a prayer that has been in, in process for the last 18 months or so. It, it took Rick a long time to get into the prison, and then when he found out some of the men wanted to be baptized, the, the jailer that, whatever, not the warden, but the jailer that was working there didn't agree with Rick's teaching, and he shut them down for a while. And that was a prayer that was ongoing for a long, long time. And, and finally it came to fruition last week. And we appreciate the men that are involved in that as well as the women that are involved in that. I have a couple of prayer requests. Uh, Kay Thompson uh, handed me a card, said, please pray for my sister, Pam Caldwell. She recently lost her job and she has been the only source of income for my mother and her disabled husband. And I ask that you pray that God will provide her with a job opportunity that is less physically demanding and pays better. And so, okay, we will be in prayer about that. Also, Carolyn Onley uh, asked us to pray for her twin brother, Weldon Bradford, was admitted to the hospital last night with fluid on his lungs and his heart is not working well and he needs lots of prayers at this time so we will be in in prayer about that would you uh, would you pray with me and then we will have our uh, scripture text reading let's pray together <coughs> heavenly father we're thankful for the salvation that you've given us through the blood of christ Father, we don't understand uh, how that all works, but it's by faith that we know that if we've come in contact with your blood at, at uh, baptism. All of our sins are washed away and forgiven and will be forgiven as long as we live a repentant life. And Father, we pray that we would walk in the light, we would honor you and glorify you, and we're thankful for the salvation that is ours, a free gift from you and from your Son. Father, we're thankful for the baptisms that took place last week and uh, for the ladies that worked the ministry and for Rick and, and uh, for Gary and Norman and for all the effort that went in that. And we're thankful for you answering prayers uh, that that might take place. And Father, we're thankful for the World Bible School, for all the efforts that have gone into that for so many years for the souls that have been added to your kingdom uh, through those efforts. And Father, we pray that you would uh, be with Lloyd and his health. We pray you'd be with Betty Lou and, and Stuart and Vonda as they look after them. And Father, we just ask uh, for blessings on Lloyd of uh, peace and comfort and better health. And Father, we also pray that you would uh, be with Janie Rogers and be with Johnny as he looks after her and Father, uh, we would ask that you would be with, with Kay's sister, Pam. And Father, she needs a better job. But Father, right now she needs any job so that she can take care of her family. And Father, we pray that you would just help her in that. And we ask that you'd be with Mike and Kay as they minister uh, to Pam. And Father, we ask that you'd be with Weldon and that uh, his health would improve. And we pray that you'd be with Leonard and Carolyn as they see about him. And we pray that you'd be with that family. Father, we uh, just ask for healing for them. And Father, we uh, want to join uh, thousands of other churches today as they pray for our president. Father, we, we uh, we don't agree uh, with a lot of the things that uh, President Trump does morally, but we do believe that uh, he is trying to, to do the right thing on, on abortion and several other issues that is, is good for this country and that is good for your kingdom. And Father, we just ask that you would be with him and grant him wisdom Father, we pray you would, that he would uh, 
that you'd grant him humility, that he would ask for humility. Father, we pray for him as he tries to lead this country in a way that is better for your kingdom. Father, we ask that you would be with all the leaders at all forms of government, that you would uh, help them to lead in a way that is going to be more beneficial to your church. Father, uh, we pray that you would be at Perry as he is away today. You'd give him safety and continue to comfort him in in the death of Linda. Father, also, we pray that you'd be with John today as he brings the, the lesson to us, and we pray that you would just help him to deliver the things that uh, he has prayed about, and we know that you've laid on his heart. Father, again, we're thankful for your love, and it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Let's read Psalms 46 together. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar in foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar and kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolation of the earth. He makes wars to cease the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Grant. Good morning, church. Isn't it a great day to be a Christian? I am maybe a little bit loud. Turn me down just a little bit. I don't like hearing my own voice, so uh, uh, it's great to see everyone this morning. Uh, beautiful June morning. It is June. Uh, I know that because especially at the beginning of June is a big month for the Carey household. Uh, both my wife and daughter's birthday are in June, so I have to remember that. It's very important. Yesterday was my wife. Tomorrow is uh, my daughter Charlotte's. So we're going to say happy birthday. We're going to sing the whole song, but we're going to ha- say happy birthday to my wife and daughter. So on the count of three, we'll say happy birthday, Caitlin and Charlotte. Charlotte, are you listening? All right, ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday, Caitlin and Charlotte. All right. All right, I did my homework for the day. So let's stand for these first couple songs. We're going to sing praises to the Lord. You are beautiful beyond description to marvelous for words to wonderful for comprehension like nothing ever seen or heard who can grasp your infinite wisdom who can fathom 
month or so in Europe. It was a, a trip that we had really wanted to take, so we decided that it was in or never. We went to Normandy. As we're standing there, I'm standing on the beach, and I can just picture in my mind the Allied Armada coming over the horizon in the channel. And I'm standing there, and I can just picture the entire scene of, of the, the, the invasion on D-Day. And one of the things we did while we were there was we went up on a cliff, a ledge that, that on that date, June 6, 1944, was one of the major battle scenes. That now is a cemetery, a very large cemetery full of markers for all of these Americans who gave their lives on that day. 
And it's an experience that the four of us will never forget. And I'm thinking about that. And I'm also thinking about how even now, those from France and Belgium and Luxembourg and just all of that region who were alive at that time, even today, they see an American serviceman in uniform, they'll walk up to him with tears in their eyes, shake their hands and say, thank you. And they'll say, that was my grandfather or my great-grandfather who did that. They said, it doesn't matter. Because even today, all these years later, they remember that. We as Christians have this opportunity every week. We have something that symbolizes, just like those tombstones symbolize the life of the one who is underneath This time where we partake of the bread and this fruit of the vine is a time for us to sit back and look at something that symbolizes our Savior. A chance for us to remember what He's done for us, the life that He gave, the blood that He spilled for us so that we can look to Him with tears in our eyes and say, thank you. Thank you for sacrificing yourself so that we can be free free from sin, free from the final death, free from condemnation. Pray. Holy God, we come humbly into your presence saying, trying to say how grateful we are. Grateful that you created us, grateful that you loved us, grateful that you sent your son having a hard time wrapping our heads, Lord, around just what it took for you, what it took for him to go through that. Trying to understand why, despite everything that that we as humans have done, everything that we will do, we as individuals will do, you still allowed that to happen. And why your son still went through everything that he suffered. The Father We are so grateful. Fathers, we partake of this bread that represents his body and everything that he suffered. May we look at it with humility and with gratitude. And may we latch onto you, Lord, because it is only through you that we have what we have. This time, Lord, in your son's name we pray. Amen.
couple of hours after that invasion had started, after the whole operation began, radio broadcasts across the U.S. and across England have these words. They said, the liberation of Europe has begun. Continuing that analogy, when Jesus was arrested in the garden, when they're leading him to his trial, at that point, it was a very similar situation as you look at it. The liberation of humanity had begun. Father, we come back into your presence. Thinking of the blood that flowed to pay that price. To provide the freedom from sin, the freedom from self, the freedom from death. We thank you. We thank you for the price that was paid. We thank you for loving us enough. We thank you for the guidance that comes through the sacrifice the life that was lived before the sacrifice and just everything that you are. May we never forget, Lord. May we never lose faith. May we never lose concentration. May we never lose appreciation for everything that you went through, for everything that the lamb went through, for all of the blood that flowed, that went backwards, that went forward, that covers us, Every day. So humbly in your presence, in the name of your Son that we pray. Amen.
want to share a thought with you this morning, an uh, author um, shared yesterday. It is our job and joy as parents to brag about God to our kids. Do they know all that he has done for us? Have we taken the time to tell our kids about the ways that God has blessed us even before they were born? We tend to focus on manners and piety, but a big job for parents is simply being God's cheerleader. Psalms 145, 4 through 7 says, One generation will commend your works to another, and they will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of your glorious splendor, your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim of your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Let us pray. Our Heavenly and Father above, we come to you thanking you for this awesome country we live in and the freedom we have to worship you, the freedom we have to tell others about you, and not face the persecution that many countries, many missionaries do daily. We ask you, Lord, to bless our offering to you for the work of this church and for the work in this community and the work, and the work worldwide. So thank you for all our blessings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Each day I do a golden deed by helping those who are in need. My life on earth is but a span, and so I'll do the best I can. Are we good? I only heard a few, so I'm not sure if ever. How many of you are awake? I figured Roman was still asleep, so. <laughs> Let's see what our lesson is today. Oh, we got a nice little S hook. So, we can use this, we, we use this a lot of times to put over our doors, don't we? And we, we can hang our hat, right? And I was always told that home is wherever you hang your hat, okay? But in God's word, it's all about our heart. So I have to ask you, where do you hang your heart? On a hook, okay. So actually, I, if we hang our heart on God's hook, we're at home with God, right? So let's think about this as we talk to mom and dad and grandpa and grandma this week about hanging our hook, our heart, on whose hook? Do we put it on our home or do we put it on God's home? Yeah, because that can be very tempting for us to hang our, hot, our heart 
on our home and not think about God. But if we put it on God's home, then we're thinking about where we're staying with him, right? So I'm not sure who to give this back to since I gave this to Hunter, but I've got to give this box to a young lady and I'm going to give it to Caden's sister. So there we go. So you think of something next week to talk about that you want to show that how God's in your home, okay? All right, so let's stand quietly and let's walk to Children's Bible Hour or back to our parents. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. song or two. Um, at this time, uh, if you have a prayer request, please come forward at this time. There'll be a shepherd waiting. If you are a prayer warrior, uh, you can come back, come up and uh, get cards at this time as well. God is so good. God is so good. God
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shadow. It's good to see you. It's good that you're here. Perry is not here. John is here. We are here. And so we're a people today filled with grace and compassion and long suffering, right? Amen? Amen. May it be so. A still life painting. What is it about a still life painting that can grab your attention? They're usually very simple piece of fruit, a bowl of fruit, a cup, and yet it grabs our attention. And it's peaceful, powerful, almost cleansing to just stare into a still life. And I don't wonder why that is. I don't know the answers, just asking the question. But I wonder if that's what God sees in us when he sees a still life. Question. Psalm 46. Turn with me to Psalm 46 again, please. And as we start to, to look more into that, into God's message in that psalm, let's pray together. Father, as we turn now into your word, and we lean into your word, Father, to hear and understand your teaching. I pray that it may be your voice alone that we hear. And as we hear your voice, that we may find peace and hope and joy and confidence in who you are. And may our hearing and our acceptance of your word and your glory, just as it is to our benefit. Bless us in this study. Bless us as we look into your word. We eagerly anticipate your presence here with us today. Thank you for that. And in the son, name of your son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Psalm 46. First, I noticed that this is a song that was written for the music director. So I assume, and I, I think that means that, that it was written as a song to be sung publicly. Its intent appears to be a song of reassurance to some that God is in control. And maybe as a warning to some that God is in control. That theme is clear throughout the song. 
Verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength. Verse 5, God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Verse 7, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Verse 10, know that I am God. And that is a message that I want us to hear today. I fear at times that we as God's people have lost that sense of awe in knowing who God is and knowing his sovereignty and his providence, the full meaning of it and what it means for us today. It's easy for us to get consumed by our circumstances and by our problems and the things going on in the world around us and lose sight of God and his place in our world. I'm sensing it. And I hear that some of you are sensing it too. Because of this sense of chaos and turbulence and dysfunction that seems to swirl around us in our world and in our country and in our lives and even in our church, that we lose sight and we lose full confidence in who God is at times like that. The kind of confidence that will change us. It's intended to change us. The kind of confidence that compels us forward even when things are hard and even when things appear to be going off the rails. The kind of confidence in the face of chaos and even in the face of outright adversity that can keep us moving? Are we missing that kind of confidence in God that defines who we are as his people and makes us different than the world around us? I fear it because the loss of that perspective will lead to discouragement. And it can lead to a form of self-reliance And it can even lead to a form of haughtiness and arrogance if we lift ourselves to that place of being in control. So I think it's good from time to time that we stop and we we try to recalibrate our view of God in our lives. And that's what I hope this message can be for us today as a beginning of that recalibration if it's needed to know and understand and have confidence of who God is. And specifically today, related to God's providence. We're going to talk about God's providence. And I don't want to be confusing about what I'm saying. There's a difference between God's sovereignty and God's providence. In God's sovereignty, He's the one and only God, the Creator, the Great I Am. There are no other gods above Him. He's the one who designed the plan from the beginning that will reconcile us to him and give us that hope of living with him forever. That's our sovereign God. But in his providence, he did not just spin up the universe and then walk away to let it wind down on its own, as many seem to believe. He's actively working today in our world in his providence The hand of God remains directly involved. That's his providence. He's in control. He's holding things together yet today. It's not winding down. He's holding it together. And he actively works in our lives to fulfill his purpose. And he wants to know that with confidence. So beyond my full comprehension, I accept the fact that he is both reigning as supreme God in the universe on his throne, watching his plan in motion and waiting for the day that it will be complete. And at the same time, he's actively working with his hand here on earth, in our world, in our lives, every day, controlling the outcome 
for His purpose. For His purpose alone. The sovereignty and the providence of God. And in this psalm, he's saying that he wants us to know him in that way. He wants us to know him as the sovereign and the provident God. The song speaks of a chaotic time. Nations are at war. Mountains are falling into the sea. God has brought desolations to the earth, it says. And I think we can relate to some of that chaos in our world today. And notice from the beginning, it's written in third person. Until you get down to verse 10. So verse 10 stands unique in this way. Because God speaks directly and emphatically. He says, be still. Know that I am God. Be still. That does not mean just be quiet. The Hebrew word that's used there for be still in my translation could be translated in various ways, depending on how you see the context. Will you be still? Stop. Seize your striving. Relax. Let go. Stop it. Calm down. Dial it down a notch. Chill out. And that gives us the picture of what he's saying. And he highlights in that statement a dependence, a link between that concept and our ability to know that he is God. A link between our ability to stop and to let go of the things that are holding us and that we're holding and to have full knowledge of who he is and who he wants to be and the impact that he wants to have in our lives, in his sovereignty, and in his providence. And I don't see this statement as being as much a directive to, to stop, be still, as it is an offer, imploring, be still, and know that I am God. An offer of assurance that will come, he knows, from us knowing him. Just let go. Just put it down. Relax your grip on whatever you're holding on to other than me. Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But what you do, he says, you seek first his kingdom, and his righteousness. And isn't that the same message? You see the same message there? Don't worry. Be still. And know that God is in control. God speaks similar words through Moses in Exodus chapter 14. In Exodus chapter 14, you recall that it's the story of the Exodus. The people, his people, or now have their backs up against the sea because that's just where he wants them. And Pharaoh's army is charging down on them and panic ensues among the people. And, and everyone's complaining about Moses' leadership. And Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will ne you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. God's word through Moses is all you have to do is be still. Just calm down and watch. I've got this. You'll know I've got this from what you see. And God said, and God did, and it says that after that, as after they crossed over the sea, they sang a song. And I'm picturing the whole congregation singing, involved in an amazing celebration, joy beyond containment, excitement, volume to the heights of the heavens. Because at that moment, they knew that God was their God. 
They sing a song with these words, it says, In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working your wonders. Do we have that view of God as we gather as his people today? Do we have that level of excitement, that level of confidence? Or have we lost it? If we've lost it, we need to get it back. Most will remember the news story about flight MH370 back in 2014. A Malaysian air flight left Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, headed for Beijing, China. 227 passengers. It wasn't long after takeoff that things began to go strange. And although no one really ever knew and figured out what happened, it's clear from radar tracking and from satellite communication that at some point soon after takeoff, that it turned sharply from its northeasterly heading to a southwesterly heading. And for there, likely flew for hours across the Indian Ocean with no destination in mind until it ran out of fuel. If the 227 passengers were alive during those hours, can you imagine? They flew for hours knowing that it was the wrong way, knowing that things were off track, no doubt saying, this is wrong. This doesn't feel right. Why is this happening? And asking the question, is there really someone up there that's in control? What a terrible feeling. No understanding of what's happening. No confidence in the control. And no hope. There's no doubt that some of us at times face those similar situations in our lives. When things don't seem right, things are off course. It shouldn't be happening, but it is happening. And we don't understand and we ask the question, is there, any, is there really anyone up there that's in control? In control of my mess. And I think when that becomes our persistent reality, we have lost the confidence that God wants us to have in Him and His providence. And we will lose hope. Scripture is clear concerning God's providence that it's active. He wants us to know and be confident in that, that even when things don't seem right, He is at work and He is in control. The examples are many. This is not a hidden truth. He wants us to know it. Proverbs 21 says, In the Lord's hand, the king's heart is a stream of water that He channels towards all who please Him. Now see the picture there of God's providence. We all know from experience that water has a will of its own. But a man can cut channels and he can use that same natural will of water to bring the water to where he needs it. The scripture is saying in the same way, God can cut channels and use the will of men, use the will of a king even, to bring about his purpose. We're going to be sharing a story like that, the story of Esther, soon in our VBS. It's a story of God's providence. In the story, Azuaras, the king, chooses to get rid of his wife, Ashti, Vashti. It was his decision. It was his will. He lifted himself up on his ego and made it happen. And in an instant, Vashti was gone. It was his choice then to accept the advice of his crew to say, let's have a beauty pageant and let's bring in all the pretty girls and let you choose another one. And it was his will to say, that's a good idea. And he did it. And it was because of his own decision then that Esther became 
the source of his pleasure, and eventually the focus of his favor. It was his own decision Then, when he couldn't sleep at night, he asked some of his people to come in and read to him. And they read to him from the history of his own reign as king, thinking surely that will put him to sleep. And during that reading, he learned things about some of his people that he didn't know, and it angered him. And from that, it brought him to take actions that led to the powerful end of this story. As Juarez made the decision to dump Vashti, he made the decision to choose Esther. He made the decision to have a book read. And what happened? It led to the execution of the bad guy, Haman. It led to the exaltation of the good guy, Mordecai. And it led to the salvation of God's people. It was his purpose. It was the king's will. And why does he continue today to do the same work in our lives? We need to know it's for his purpose and have confidence that it's for his purpose. His purpose has always been the same. What is it? His purpose has always been about his glory and the good of his people. Simply stated, his glory and the good of his people. Back in the Exodus 14 story, we see that purpose, his glory. God says to Moses, I will gain glory for myself through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am Lord. And the good of his people, don't be afraid, Moses said. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today for your good. And when he says to us in Psalm 46, know that I am God. He's seeking the same purpose. It's for his glory and our good. Romans 8, 28. We all know this verse and use it and repeat it often. Paul says in Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Know that in all things, God works for our good. Present tense. Psalm 46. Know that I am God. Present tense. Now, today, God is working for our good. And we can know that God is God today. The assurance is that we may know, you may know that God is in control. Know that in all things, God works for the good of his people, both yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And what is that good? Is it our health? Is it our wealth? Is it our happiness? No. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. And then that good in a phrase is defined. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to what? To be conformed to the image of his son. He's making me and you like Jesus. and That is definitely for our good. And that is definitely for his purpose, that we're being transformed into the image of his son. And it's been that plan from the beginning. Since the fall in the garden, we've seen that plan unfold before us. The mysteries revealed to bring that transformation to completion, his ongoing purpose for our good. For your good, we can have confidence. When Paul writes to the Corinthians, he says again, present tense, we are being transformed into his likeness. It's repeating that same eternal purpose to make us more like Jesus. He wants us to know that. He wants us to find assurance in that. It's happening. We can 
when we can learn to be still. So don't be discouraged when things don't look right. Our plans fail. People around us fail. Some people are mean. Our bodies fail. People say bad things. The world is in chaos. Things appear from our perspective to be off course if we're only seeing our circumstances. God implores us to see more than that. See His purpose and know that He is God. Hear God say to you, don't be discouraged. Be still. Know that I am God. Number two, be still and know that I am God to avoid self-reliance. Number three, be still and know that I am God so you won't become haughty and arrogant. Those will have to wait. Out of time, out of voice. So another day, we'll wrap up with this. When things seem wrong, when things seem turbulent, and there's conflict, it seems on all sides, When things look like they're headed in the wrong direction, there's no good destination in sight. When we wonder, is there anyone really up there in control of what's happening? He says, let go and know that I am God. As I always was, as I always will be. It's a reminder that He, the Lord God omnipotent, sits on His throne and at the same time works in our lives through His providence. Don't be discouraged. So the question for you and me in all of this is do I get it? Even do I buy it? Do I buy it that there's a purpose? Do I have confidence and accept and acknowledge that he is God, and all that means for me. That he sits on his throne and he works directly in our lives for my good. Do I know that? Do I know it in a way that changes who I am every day? And how I live, and how I think, and how I treat people, and how I prioritize things. Am I confident in that way that it brings about change in my life and guides me away from the discouragements that can try to crowd in? Is it real? These things that we're talking about, is it real? Has it changed who I am? Is it changing who I am continually? Am I allowing the Spirit of Christ to conform me into His image? Are you allowing... He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. If not, aren't we just here going through the motions? Maybe we just need to be still and know that God is God, that He has a purpose, and we need to see it. If you're having trouble today seeing that plan, seeing that purpose at work in your life, let's pray together. If you find yourself questioning, is anyone really up there in control? Let's pray together. If you need to let go and know again that He is God, do that, whatever it takes. Let's sing and pray together as we stand. Be still.
Um, it's, uh, I know it's summertime, so we got a lot of traveling, but every time that uh, you're in town, we uh, hope and pray that you're here with us uh, every Sunday morning that you can. If you're a visitor, uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, again, please come back and, uh, and visit with us and, uh, and talk to us and be, become part of our uh, worship assembly and, and our church family. We're going to end this morning with the Glory Land Way. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saved today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in